and I'ma get it. You know I be on the way. Yeah. What's up, and welcome to another exciting edition of the Ride the Rebellion Broken Mountain Bike Body Challenge podcast, the world's only zero drop podcast. Speaking of dropping, I wish the kidney stone currently plaguing me would drop right on down the old ureter. With me today, as always, is the king of the South Alabama turndown and the man who puts metatastrophe, I don't know what I'm going with, <laughs> puts dents in metas, Dale Boyd of not Wait, Facebook meta. At first, I was like, is ureter a, a, a word? And then you said metatastrophe, and I was like, we're not yeah. doctors, folks. Yeah, we're not. We've I mean, uh, seen a lot. I've seen a lot of doctors. You've seen a lot of bike doctors recently. Yeah, actually, I will give a shout out to Common, so we can talk about that later, yeah. but it's pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, on today's episode, we're talking about what happens when your shit breaks, mm -hmm. which uh, most of you have gone through, uh, whether it's your body, like in my instance. Or uh, most of our listeners, because we're the same age demographic. Things Welcome just to Old Talk. I'm Drew, and with me today is Senior Dale. <laughs> this is how old guys rule. <laughs> it's is totally uh, yeah, so, so depressing. It is depressing. Um, we're in, you know, look, like everything in life, you have seasons of high and low, and mm -hmm. we are at one of the low ones. Well, I'm also hungover like three days ago still. So <laughs> there's there's a lot of it's like uh I know some of you guys in the past have tuned in for our summertime uh debacle. <laughs> uh the the one summertime it's been two years now and it's like unplanned it just happens yes yes uh it's kind of the wintertime one. Oh, 100 because no one's riding 100 percent, and the weather's beautiful yeah i don't get it at, well i mean i'd love to ride i'd love to do anything more i know i'm yeah. so pitiful <laughs> on a bike right now that Wait, like did we just we did we trend set it didn't we yeah. <laughs> like, hey everybody the trend for this this winter is busted balls and broken bikes <laughs> yeah and you can't ride yours if drews and dales is broken <laughs> uh, hashtag influencers <laughs> <laughs> we influence the wrong stuff speaking of being influenced i'm kind of thinking about getting a tattoo to commemorate this uh eight millimeter stone on my body there i'm gonna head on over to kevin Black. how much travel is that <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! I need it to be like literally. Was, the guy was like, "Listen, uh, right about now." Uh, so you guys know, I uh, uh, last Saturday, I did a Friday. I did a ride with Kieran, mm -hmm. and my kidney kind of hurt. I've had kidney stones before, and it kind of hurt. And I was like, "Well, it's gonna come either way." So when Kieran and I did like we called a we called a six pack run. So I was doing a six pack, which is a larger loop, and I'm riding the six pack run. And I am literally, Kieran's like, why are you jumping so much? I was literally jumping everything I could, Whoa. hopping off of so much stuff, just trying to knock that stone. He loose. was YOLOing. I was. Not and it, yo yoing. And it literally YOLOed me into the ER. It was a terrible <laughs> experience when you're at an ER. And shout out to Dr. Raymond for trying to help me. It just uh, didn't work so well. Not his fault but laying on the floor of an ER, a disgusting floor of an ER, screaming in pain, no one's seeing you. So I was like, I'm done. We packed up and we literally drove to another ER. So oh, I was God. two ERs in the same night. Um, and they, they finally gave me treatment. They just gave me drugs and said, oh, you'll pass it. It's fine. And so that's Saturday. Sunday, I'm in pain all day. I'm popping Norcos and whatever else I can get my hands on. And I go to the, uh, I go to the, the urologist on Monday and he's like, oh no, you would never pass this. It's nine millimeters and it's or eight, eight by nine and it's lodged in your kidney. There's oh nothing, nothing going to happen. And so uh, I was like, well, how far does it have to travel? And he goes, eh, about 150 millimeters or so. And I was like, a whole lyric fork. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God. He's like, it's stuck at the top. So you're here. You got to get down uh, no. to there. And uh yeah, so I need to travel a lyric fork. So to commemorate that, I'm thinking about getting me a nice little tattoo that just says exit only or or drop them while it's hot or I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm going to get one right on the kidney. <laughs> just my, knock those other stones How about loose. you just get one that says my pee hole prepared for this? Oh, my God. It was not prepared. <laughs> it was not prepared. It's trained for this? It, it's, training. <laughs> it's training. I'm stone training. Instead of, instead of other types of training, I'm stone training. Cock push-ups. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> and so anyway, so I've gone through this whole process. Uh, that happens to me. I'll let Dale tell his in a second. Cause we'll talk about the broken bikes part, but it was a horrific thing. Thinking about getting tattooed. I've also not been able to run. Can you pick <laughs> that one up? I would run it over to run and try. Um, after you got your tattoo at man of war tattoo, <laughs> get some shoes, <laughs> get some run shoes, the stones out. uh, some nutrition, some shoelaces, some socks. Oh, uh, actually we were at, uh, we were on set working 
in yep. at a shoe store. Yep. And the lady carried the same, and I struck up a conversation about the feature socks and how beautiful they are. You can get yours at Run and Try. They are legit. Good they socks. are very good socks. You're paying for them a little bit. No, but it's worth every penny. It's worth every penny. Uh, yeah, and then it, no, no training in the world would have assisted me for the amount of pain that I was in. But if Toby Cortez and the gang over at Summit Bike Academy was nice enough to give you kidney stone training for how to deal with the pain. Right. However, uh, caveat, Toby is not a doctor either. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Toby. Definitely not, Tobes. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, if uh, I, I thought about this, it was like, well, maybe I'll get back on my bike. So in the downtime of this, in this scenario of having... And I have a broken bike as well. No, I'll talk about that when we get to that. But even that, like I, the only thing I can do, cause I'm not allowed to lift a certain amount of weight. I can, cause I have a stent put in the, the first operation they did on or surgery outpatient, but it didn't work. So they had to put a stent in and let me tell you folks too much information, but I need you to feel the pain. When you get a stent put in things happen, <laughs> things happen to places you didn't expect to oh, happen. Goodness. And, and there's new things that you've never seen before that you're confused <laughs> by. <laughs> Uh, and somewhere some guy's making a oh you saw your penis for the first time joke no 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 <laughs> sir no that is not the joke this is one of those times where it's like uh earmuffs adult men yes you don't want to hear yeah, this you don't want to hear it <laughs> i assure you of that um but yeah so i i have been able to take in the downtime and and the only thing i can do is they say you can i can't do anything aggressive but i can i can uh casually ride a bike so I used that time to practice, not sprints, nothing else, but just casually practice on my leaning because all I could uh, do is ride in my little neighborhood loop and just practice that and stay in the That's a good idea, too. though. No, it's... I it mean, it me keeps, you, keeps you, uh, um, I guess, ready. That, that's, I, mean, I that's don't even know thing. what else to say. Yeah, there is ready. nothing else to say. It's all I can I do. think it's... Uh, <laughs> I think when doctors give us that advice, they don't know how we ride when yeah, they say casually because exactly. the same thing happened when I separated my shoulder. He was like, you've been riding your bike, haven't you? And I was like, uh, does it, do I have a cut or something? Like, yeah. can you tell from my shoulder? And so, I mean, they don't still know. Yeah. Uh, shout out. Uh, Nixon has a grade three separation as well. So oh. get well, Nixon, uh, learn how to ride your bike. You won't crash. So. Yeah. And if you would go to Summit Bike Academy, uh, <laughs> you would learn uh, with uh, Shred with Summit. That's right. There you go. I got it right this time. That's right. No more free plugs. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Shred with slime. Slide for slime. Damn it. Uh, um, anyways. Uh, and then, you know, one of the other things is, is we haven't talked about them a lot, but they're kind of like a silent sponsor. And that's to our, our gang, our, 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 one of our LBSs that's cool enough to hang out with us from time to time. And I wanted to shout out uh, the kids over at ProCycle. Absolutely. My oh. family and I stopped over there the other day. Did you? Yeah, on our way to uh, another event. Um, we had, were wasting time, and I was like, let's go early and eat somewhere. We never ate. We just stopped at ProCycle, hung out with Jose and um, Katie yeah. for a little while, and the, and the pets. And the cool part about them now is we actually have a pivot dealer, mm -hmm. right? Still pivot dealer? Yeah, pivot. Yeah, we have a pivot dealer in the area, so if you're interested in something with a little more aggressive or you just want something a little more uh, pedally, I will tell you. Uh, I recently got a new bike. I have a, a Ibis Ripley. And I will say, despite everything I've heard, because there's a lot of hype that went around the Ripleys for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, God, I will be honest with you. I have pedaled more and with ease on that. That DW Link is not a joke. I know that some people already know that. Yeah. But legitimately, you can feel it. Like, I wish it was big enough for you. I mean, you could probably ride the large. But when you somebody who's ridden a lot of miles when you start pushing up a hill and it doesn't you just don't feel that lag yeah. it is a weird feeling because it for me feels like who also owns an e-bike it feels like i'm riding an e-bike without the without the e it's like a, it's really clean it's really efficient barely with the d at this point yeah, well, barely with anything <laughs> at this point um yeah i do want to ride something with lower travel um that's been on the table in the recent discussions of my future yeah of course but, um right now it's not I'm kind of going to stick with what I got. I get it. I totally get it. And especially the way you ride your, your style is uh, more conducive for that. So one of the things that we're teasing up here is I'll let Dale tell his story and I'll share mine. But one of the challenges I think we all face as riders, and I think there's different ways to approach this. And I think that's really good. Some tips basically from guys that have both, uh, both inadvertently destroyed their bicycles yes dale's catastrophically uh yeah. i destroyed a, a wheel and a hub i didn't destroy the wheel i destroyed the hub catastrophically but i think we can kind of talk through it do you want to talk about what happened with your yeah, scenario so what actually happened was drew got kidney stones and because we are et 
the very same day, I crashed my common cell and to into a tree. Uh, post the video if you've seen it. Um, I feel sorry for you because um, I cried. Yeah. I did play. I did put the. Um, Oh, what's the stupid girl? Uh, Sarah McLaughlin song. Oh yeah, yeah, the one with like the sad puppies. <laughs> yes. for, like, oh my that god, that was the saddest thing. Yeah. Um, so, uh, just an update. I did email Common Cell. Uh, their first question back to me was, "Are you okay?" Which is quality. That was, oh, dude. When I got that email back, I was like, "That's not. That doesn't answer any of my questions." Right. Like, I just want to know about my frame and that. Uh, but to me, I was telling Drew. I think it, it made me feel like I was talking to a real person or a real bike shop. Like. The fact that they asked me if I was okay was pretty rad. Yeah. Um, and I've never met them, obviously. But now I feel like I know the guy because I've emailed him a thousand times. Um, so what they they offer a crash replacement um, frame. I, but the sad, the very sad part is they no longer make polished. Yeah. So it's gone. It's gone in my size anyway. Um, so I have to change colors. So the polished frame is no longer. But Rip. I will upgrade to the newer frame the newer model and that's one of the things i want to mention is uh or i'll go through mine and then we'll go back to it because i think dale touched on something there i think it's kind of important that some some people know about some people don't some people don't think about it if they're way more casual and and like i am like i'm mechanically stupid um i didn't think about it i destroyed (laughs) proudly destroyed an uh an i9 hydra hub like totally trashed it um it it is my fault at the end of the day. I think there's some evidence to suggest that uh, some things I got uh, from, I'm not even going to say it's the wheel manufacturer, but some things I got from my Gorilla Gravity and, and so forth led down that path. And it was just like a very slow process. Um, and so it, it basically the drive on the inside, the teeth were sheared to a point where they wouldn't catch. You can't see it unless you really get in close and shout out to Phil at, at Eastern shore bikes for, for like working me through it. Eastern shore cycles, whatever it is. But uh, Phil like was like, here, let me show you. Cause I couldn't see it. And he saw it right away. Mm-hmm. And he like took his iPad, took a picture and zoomed in. He was like, see how just this little corner is beveled. And I was like, yeah, he goes, that's it. It was like, as soon as that happens, you're done. And he goes, I don't know how you did it, but you did it. And I was like, well, aren't I just the luckiest son of a gun? <laughs> And so anyway, so I had the same issue. I wrote to I-9, they sent back a response, and then we'll kind of talk through what that looks like as well. So you guys are on the same page for that side of it. So let's talk about the steps. So you damaged something pretty crucial, like in Dale's case, the frame. That's catastrophic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, did, I didn't I did know what level. And obviously, I know email and comment, so they're going to be like, oh, don't ride it. Like Because yeah. if they say ride it and something happens, there's product tragic. liability law, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So... I demonstrated this to my wife on how, why it's catastrophic. So basically I dented the down tube really badly, but on the, if it was trade on the down tube, I'd be fine with it, but it's on the actual edge, like the sharp mm. edge, like, right. So it's a weight bearing edge too. Yeah. So basically I took a soda can and I pressed on it with no dent in it and there's, it's hard to crush, right? You have to put a lot of weight. Um, and then I just put one small dent and then it crushed straight down. And then I said, uh, get your checkbook out, man, (laughs) because I need a new bike. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I have still been riding it uh, against common sales wishes, uh, but I'm not going to ride it like I usually do. Um, just trying to, I have to pay the, the crash warranty I do have to pay for, or the crash. So let's talk through that. So one of the things that we know about it, like, so I bought, um, I bought, um, uh, we are one wheels and it comes with a, a free crash replacement or if they break, there's yeah, a crash right. replacement. You're paying for that upfront, right? Yeah. I don't expect a frame to have that because it's, it's, yeah. a this much was a cost. Dale problem. Like, that's right. That's right. The frame didn't, the frame didn't, wasn't the frame's fault. It was my inability to make a corner around a tree. That's right. And so one of the things about that is if your bike breaks, the first thing I would do is contact your manufacturer. Mm-hmm. Obviously you're going to play the warranty game. I was not in warranty. I don't think you have a warranty. Uh, right. There's five years on the frame. So I was still in warranty, but because but you it was, caused it. Yeah, yeah, I caused it. So that's one thing to keep in mind is like, if you have a, a failure, immediately call the manufacturer or mm-hmm. not even who you bought it from. I'd go straight to the manufacturer. The bike industry seems to be very different than a lot of others. You have to go to the manufacturer. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm no lawyer, but I did stay in the Holiday Inn sometimes. And I do think a lot of that has to do with product liability law based on mm-hmm. the lawyer clients I do have. I've asked them questions about it. Back when we were trying to potentially open a bike shop, mm-hmm. they explained some stuff to me that was super scary. Why we don't own a bike shop now. That is exactly <laughs> right. 
And so uh, that's one of it. So one step is do what Dale did. And so in that process, you just literally just sent them an email and like explained it out. And then mm -hmm. they followed back up. Is that all you had to go through? Yeah. And actually, I first of all, I went to the common cell owners group on Facebook because I'm like, hey, let's ask some people that it was like my instantaneous like reaction, like crash bike. Let's find people who may have done this. Like what's there? And it was a Sunday. So I knew I wasn't going to get a response from common cell. And honestly, they're like people are so negative with their opinions, right? Oh, yeah. And all I got was like, you'll never hear from Common Cell. Literally, I emailed them Sunday night, Monday morning at 9.05, and they come in at 9. I was Is that the email. Common Cell US? That yeah, the US. And oh, I sick. think that the difference is there are a lot of UK people on that group. Um, there's not a lot of United States Common Cell people. Right. Um, but there is a bol there are in Boulder, so... Um, right when they got there, they emailed me back. So it's pretty cool. I mean, that's pretty solid. And then they just basically gave you the rundown of, like yeah, they told me like, uh, what my options were. Um, I have color options. Uh, the ones I want are the cheapest or the ones I don't want are the cheapest, right? The of ones course. I do want are the most expensive, yeah. but, um, it offers me the opportunity to essentially have a brand new bike. All my parts will fit transfer right over even my shock. Did uh, they ask shock. you, like, did they go through your parts list with you and say, yeah. hey, that'll all still The fit? only thing I have to get is a new headset because the headset's different. Um, and I probably will just get a new bottom bracket anyway um, yeah. because of what's the point. Yeah. But um, so they were going through and said, you know, they let me know, basically held my hand through the process. And the guy was like, you know, I'm a sales guy, obviously, but um, I don't want you to have an old bike when you can have a brand new one for the price way cheaper and i don't yeah. want to say the prices i'll let that comment i'll tell you that but yeah um way cheaper than what i could so basically i'm gonna have a 2024 bike with some 2022 parts on it but whatever it'll be sweet. i mean the, the thing is i think a lot of times people get hung up on the parts and mm -hmm. yes it's fun to upgrade and buy the new parts, parts are consumable anyway a hundred percent and we've talked about it before with brakes and other stuff. Mm -hmm. You're going to go through pieces and parts and you're going to change the riding style shift. Certain things change in that way and, and so forth. Um, so overall, though, like when you're ready to buy, do you go back to them to buy? Yeah, direct? I just have to email that same guy right. and tell him. He said, I said, asked him like what the time frame is because I was like, man, I got to talk to my wife and stuff yeah. <laughs> like i don't i've got to go work some corners and things so what did they end up did they give you like a crash replacement is that what the scenario is they have a crash replacement scenario no 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 they have brand new frames that come out in march got so it. i'll get one of those got the it. problem is i have to pay for it now to make sure i'll get one because they sell out it's so a pre-order yeah 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 so i to make sure my size and everything because i don't want to like miss the opportunity on the color i want no don't blame me because the other color option is not good yeah uh I'm obviously I build everything strictly for aesthetics. Yeah. Well, we, as we've <laughs> learned, it's interesting. Cause that's a, it's a little bit different experience than what I had with, with, um, industry nine, um, send them an email. They were relatively responsive. Um, where are they at? Oh, they're out of North Carolina. Okay. Well, yeah, so relatively responsive. Yeah. They were, they were good. They got back in touch. There's a couple different guys I had to deal with all in the same email thread. So luckily like the service they use, was good in the sense of like the whole thread was there. So anybody that responded to me knew what was going yeah, on to work through it. Uh, they were really awesome because they were like, all right, take some photos. So I took some, a bunch of different pictures. Mm -hmm. The guy obviously zoomed in, saw the exact same thing Phil saw, and they gave me options. And they said, look, we're going to put this under um, crash warranty replacement for you. But this is how it works. And the guy diagnosed exactly the issue. And the issue was, in case anyone's curious, again, uh, a little shade on myself. I don't give two smacks. But the truth is, the axle was not tight enough, even though I was tightening it. And if anyone knows the story of the gorilla gravity, I've talked about it before where I had brake issues in that. Mm -hmm. So one part of the problem was that I was tightening. The other part of the problem is the end cap that was on it was not the correct end cap. That is not my fault. That is somebody else's fault, but no one's going to claim sounds responsibility. Sounds like a company that was probably going out of business. Yeah, just sounds like caps in. So the end cap on the other side was just shy enough. So what ended up happening is, Every time I pedal real hard and it would slowly just work that. And mm. with the braking and all this, it would slowly undo that, yeah. uh, undo the through axle and so, or rear axle. So eventually we cranked it down and I even saw that same problem with those same hubs on my e-bike. Jody fixed it with some, uh, and shout out to Jody. Uh, we didn't plug him yet, but we'll get to him, but shout out to Jody for fixing it because he went through and was like, Hey, let's put some Loctite and lock the, mm -hmm. the rear right. And it worked and it did fine, but it was too late. The damage already been done. I put those same wheels on my new Ibis. And it happened again because the spacing is that little millimeter makes a huge difference. Yeah. Trust me. I have a kidney stone. <laughs> um, 
That's my <laughs> measure. Us, us Americans literally hate the metric system so much that we'll find anything else to measure with. Like, oh, you mean a whole sock? That's how far it's got to go. Like, yeah, yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> and so, uh, and so they they were able to diagnose the guy sent back what it was. Told me exactly the problem. He goes, look, it's it's an issue. Not with them. They didn't admit. No one's going to claim it because they knew they'd lose revenue. Mm -hmm. We were able to go back in. Um, so I just, here's the only downside. The process was send us your wheel. Now I will tell you something that FedEx taught me that is a, a free ultimate tip. If you need to send a wheel built or not, obviously take off your cassette and all that junk. But if you have to send a wheel back, if you go to home Depot, home Depot has TV boxes and they're, they're, um, um, they periscope. So the box actually has four corners in it that you put inside of another box and it slides so on top and it locks slide. your wheel and it will not move. So your, your wheel is super safe, right? Perfect. So I, I got one of those, shipped it via FedEx, sent it over to him. It went, I never heard back from him. I, I told Dale, I was like, dude, yeah, I haven't he, heard. He, I was like, oh. Yeah. Uh, downside was communication is, this is where the communication kind of broke down. I did not hear from him for like a week. And I was like, I don't know where my wheel is. The tracking number shows that it's there, but I don't, no yeah. one's confirmed. They finally confirm. They start work on it like three days later. I just got an email on set two days ago and they said, Hey, your wheel's ready. Do you want us to do anything? So they started the process and the guy, this is communication picks back up. Right. And he went through and said, look, I'm replacing all this stuff. Um, I also uh, noticed that some, there was some corrosion from the tape job was not great. Now that's not my fault. That was factory tape job, mm -hmm. not throwing shade at we are one, but I'm just telling you, it's a big complaint from a lot of we are one owners that the, the tape they put on is shite. Right. And so I had it's Canadians, it is, <laughs> I had pushed and pulled it enough that it was leaking. So fluid had gotten onto my, onto my spokes and, and the nubs or whatever they're called nipples. nipples. Those were corroded. So the guy basically rebuilt my entire wheel. Now I'll tell you how much it costs because mine's a little bit different yeah. and, and not as much as Dale's is. So they had to basically rebuild. They gave me a brand new hub, whole process, rebuilt it, rebuilt the entire wheel. It ended up cost me 350 something dollars, which is the cost of a brand new hub anyway. Yeah. So not the end of the world. They gave me a discount on labor for crash replacement. They gave me a discount on parts for crash, crash replacement. The guy went through and he was like, Hey, I'm going to update your axle. He did everything. Like he gave me some, I paid for it, yeah. but now it's much yeah, more up to their new, new specs mm -hmm. than their old specs. Right. So went through it. The reason that I thought this was relevant for a conversation is many of us have these products that we use, we wear, we tear down, but the fact that they stood behind enough to at least give me 50% on something I did yeah. and I admitted to it and it's my fault is a great way of, of kind of pushing it through to, to kind of get it. And so I at least wanted to have a conversation on that side of things of like, if you're stuck in that boat, it's not the end of the world. And I think that a lot of us jump straight to the conclusion to your full point in this whole conversation is like, Oh, it's trashed. I'm screwed. Like yep. throw it in the garbage. Yep. Like if I did that with my bike, I would be out a substantial amount of money. Oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. just be crying myself to sleep. Oh, hundred you know? percent. And like, I've had some people try to talk me into going with a different brand completely. And like a di like maybe a whole different bike and a whole different setup and just buy this and sell that and blah, blah, you know, all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, but man, just the fact that they asked me how I was, like, makes me want to continue being a customer. Which is back to the customer service side yeah. of things anyway, right? And I would have appreciated I-9 asking something too, but obviously I didn't wreck. I just right, blew yeah. it out. But I, I, the, I mean, I was a common cell customer first because Max Common Cell is at the end of every UCI race, like yep. cheering like he is the biggest fan of the team, which sold me anyway because they're winning every race. And I was like, man, that is awesome that the owner of the company, like, cares that much oh, that's huge. To, to be there. And it's like, you know how you, you'll you see all these companies, rider-owned, rider, rider-supported, rider whatever, and it's like, okay, cool, but I don't know any of them. I mean, I don't know Max Common Cell either, but yeah, at but least it, I it can see. Yeah, but it has his name on it. Right, yeah. It has his name, and the pit, like the image you get from the company is pretty sweet. Yeah. It doesn't seem, I mean, they're kind of boutique bikes, I guess, to an extent, but. The catch, though, is like, uh, unlike the other uh, boutique scenarios we've run into, with like GG and some of the other mm -hmm. companies that are fly-by-night gone, mm -hmm. is that they they are still putting proof into their product. Right. They're racing on a top level, not yeah. even just showing up. They're not the guys that are <laughs> just doing some enduro races and making. They're winning. Yeah. Uh, they're World Cup champs, right? Multiple years. And the fact is that they have that. That means they're behind their product. Their right. product has longevity. So, yes, it's boutique, but I'd almost call it 
pardon this expression, it's a little bit of an elite brand yeah. because that's kind of what they're building it towards, which is good. And, and you ride well, that's your thing. Like that's a hundred percent worth it. Yeah. To me, it was like, uh, I put riding around probably 2,500 miles on that frame and had zero problems. Like yeah. I never had any, any other issues, um, besides my lack of ability, right? That bike could do way more than I was ever going to do. Yeah, I'm curious to see what happens when we have new bike day with you because it's been a while. It's yeah, been, it's been a minute. And you've had that frame for a long time. Yeah, I've had the frame for a long time just because right. it took me a while to build. But this bike will be a pound and a half lighter as well. So um, they've changed some stuff. On oh, the bike. they changed the whole thing. The whole frame is different. Interesting. But it's still the meta. It's just called the V5 now. Yeah. Um, and factory, it comes with 150 uh, mil rear travel shock. And mine's 140, so I was asking if that's a problem, and he's like, "Oh no, that's good. You're fine." So same, same shock and everything. Yeah, the shock the eye to eye is the same. Yeah. So they don't, you don't, you can use your X2, yeah, which is brand new. Oh yeah, yeah that's Fox, a whole other thing. Let's yeah. talk about that. So one other side of that too is there's levels of customer service we dealt with mm -hmm. back to gorilla gravity the worst customer service experience because mm -hmm. they just left us all high and dry. Now people can make the argument for the other scenario of whatever that company they're with. Not here they with. I don't they're remember. selling their other parts through some other bike brand. Out they're of, probably gone. Yeah, they're all, it doesn't matter. So there's that side of things, which is worse. And then you have the intermediate, which is sort of my experience with I-9. They did it. They did the job. They were mm -hmm. awesome about it. Uh, I would have preferred a little more communication, but they got it done. The bike's been shipped, right. they told me, or the wheel's been shipped. There's that side of things. And I'm excited to see it. I got a whole new wheel. It's worth it to me. I love I love my Wear Ones um, and I, I love their hubs. I think they're a little overpriced now that I've gone through this process. And in fairness, they did give me an option and I was going to call Jody. So shout out to Jody. Again, one of our sponsors, one of our title sponsors at Build Tune Ride. I could have gotten the parts and taken Jody. However, I have a kidney stone problem and I've been down for a while. So there's no way I'm going to get to Jody. It just for me, the hassle of doing all that was too much. And so I decided to opt around. So Jody, no shade on you, bro. I know your work is good. But in this case, I wanted to go back to them and just do what it did. Then you have the kind of the top tier thing, which is what you've went through twice now. Mm -hmm. I would argue that the top tier experience you've had on two different ones, because the, the first being Common Cell, they've been honest about it, they've been straightforward. But the other one, in case you guys don't know, there is a specific model, we've talked about it before, of the X2. That's right. That is busted AF. Yeah, I don't, honestly, I don't know the years. I don't know the year range, yeah. and I would hate to quote it. And yeah, we can't Fox do that, up. but I you should look that. it up if you need yeah, to. Yeah, look it up if you have an X2 uh, rear shock, a factory version, I think. Yep. Um, and they also they'll give you a brand new one yeah so what was that to experience because so multiple of our guys did it justin yeah, did it justin did it first and yeah. i asked him how his Juan, process whoever, went. however you know justin pablo Juan, yeah. justin <laughs> um token julia's or whatever yeah right um so uh justin told me that he just well, what you originally have to do which scares people of course uh the shock needed service anyways so you have to fill out a service request form um, you send it in, you give them your credit card information because they won't charge your card until they do the service. Right. So they examine your shock and say like, oh, it needs service. We're going to, and they'll call, they'll call you or email you and say, Hey, it does need serviced. This is what the charge is going to be. Um, are we good to charge your card? And so I, you, I did all that and the service was going to be 200 bucks, I think, or something like that. Um, which now I just take it to Jody because BTR and Bill Tune Ride can do yep. it. Um, and they do a great job on the service. That's right. So uh, I sent it to them. They sent me an email back and said, hey, listen, we're just going to replace your shock for you for free with the brand new 2024 version. Good God. And they set it up. Uh, they took all of my settings that I currently had and reset it on the new shock Unreal. and sent it to me. So it was nice pop and box. play, like literally pop it on and go. Yeah. I didn't touch it. Unreal. Um, air, everything was the same. And it came in a brand new Fox box, which mine came with my, my, uh, frame. So I didn't have all the, the box and all the extra volume spacers and stuff like that. That's pretty sick. Yeah. And stickers, of course. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I also had a Fox experience. If you guys don't know, I crashed pretty hard and, and somehow no one had ever seen it, including Fox or they'd seen it, <laughs> but they were like, this is, we don't understand. I had, it was gorilla I gravity's fault. Dude. It was, yeah, we blame them. <laughs> uh, my fork was like this, like it literally like one stanion was pushed back and it was twisted from, uh, I blame the, those crappy trails up there that Chase and them manage. Um, <laughs> Dirty Uncle Chase caused it. Uh, just kidding. Um, but I did. I crashed up in Birmingham and I bent my fork. And so same thing. I sent it off to them. They uh, charged me a crash replacement. They rebuilt it and put. But they, when I say they didn't even charge me a crash replacement, they charged me a um, a service fee 
that's it. Oh, which and they, is basically just like I got a whole new lower, and they yeah. they took care of it, rebuilt it, and made it, and it's fantastic. It's that's on awesome. the e bike now. Yeah, Fox is a great company. Fox knows knows their customer service, and I think we've mm. we've we've seen that before with having Scott on and stuff. Like we we understand like his world, but like this was hands down. Two examples of like. Oh, I got another tier. example. Yeah, yeah. Because I broke more stuff. No, here we go. Um, here it is. Broke so, back mountain. Um, I did buy these wheels locally because. Oh, that's right. That's I right. I don't. I have this weird thing. Like, if I'm gonna pay a large amount of money for something, I would rather be able to carry it into a shop and be like, "This broke. Can you?" Plus, fix it helps it? in LBS. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So I bought my when I was building my bike. I bought all the very high end stuff from a local bike shop. Um, so I bought that was Eastern Shore, yeah. 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 So I bought these wheels. I got Stan's MK3 wheels with Hope Pro 4 hubs. And I had them on there for, I don't know, like six months or something. And this was on my old bike. This was on my specialized. Um, and maybe, maybe six months. I don't even know if it was that long. But I was cleaning my bike one day and I looked down and all of the spokes had pulled through the wheel, like cracked every single spoke nipple all the way around the whole wheel. And so I was like, what? Like, how is this possible? So I took it to Phil and Phil was like, dude, what did you do to this thing? I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't, I really, I don't. And he, he like would hesitate to say that I ride too hard. Like he and that's what I'm about to it. say is like, and we have a reputation in case you guys don't know when yeah. we walk into their shops are like, Oh geez. Yeah. They are. You're right. But that was before. Yeah. Right. Right. You know? Right. So that was when I was still doing some XC stuff and then on the weekends destroying my XC bike. Um, that's not really an XC bike, but Anyway, so he emailed stands, uh, got with them. Um, so he took care of most of it for me, but they um, told me that I was too big to ride an MK3 that I had. No a, joke. Yeah, so they sent me an MK4. So now I have an MK4 um, rear, rear rear wheel. That's so hard to say. Yeah. Um, and an MK3 front, but they're on two different bikes now anyway. So um, it's, and I've had the MK4 and they didn't, I didn't have to pay for any of that. They had to relace it and do it all that. Um, I think Phil actually did it. Um, yeah. but I've had that bike, that wheel on my meta on my common cell for two years now. And it's been fine. So that, that's one of the things too, about like, I know that there's some bars and brands. I, I think of bars cause there's so many handlebar brands out there that do yeah. this, but there's a bunch of different bars and brands and other things out there that people buy because they're looking for a sort of cheaper angle and i get right. it mountain biking be expensive but it's one of those things of like sometimes it's worth paying a little extra because mm -hmm. if you if you're really casual and you're not doing anything like dale competes uh we ride hard that's part of our joy is, is pushing ourselves a little bit it makes sense to spend a little more mm -hmm. um maybe maybe you can find ways around it. Like in my instance, I bought a aluminum frame because I don't really care about the carbon weight difference. I, right. I don't mind the two pounds or whatever it is because I want it for fitness. Well, like I'm, that bike's I've always a said bike. like, I, Oh, why'd you get a aluminum bike? You, you need to, don't you want a lighter bike? Like I can lose weight. Yeah. I mean, right. <laughs> it's, it's listen, not, I'm telling you, it's a great motivation. Like it, right. I don't notice it. I really don't no. Um, and I came from a heavier bike, like this one's way lighter than my stupid well, real gravity. My, I go between my bikes and one is seven pounds lighter than the other. That's a drastic, that's difference. a drastic difference. When I go to lift it up on the rack, I'm like, Oh yeah. Hey, why don't I ride this it more? feels so good to pick it up. I'm like this yeah. weighs nothing and it's not carbon. Fiber, right. right. But I think spending a little extra money on some of these makes a big difference on some products. And, and certainly I look at it like this, like. I'm a P and W fan. I'm a P and W fan because I've destroyed, uh, attempted to destroy their stuff and it's held up knock yeah. on particle wood very well for me, but like they seem to back their stuff as well. And even then Cane Creek as well. Cane Creek is the other one Cane I was about Creek to say, my good. God, those guys and gals over there are absolutely fantastic at it. And I think maintaining, uh, what I've, what I think about is I'm on a bicycle that has little tiny metal rods holding me up. And I'm jumping 20 feet through the air. Like, I want something that's nice and substantial below me when I land. Yep. Like, that's why we're so in tune. And I know that listeners that are listening to this, you hear a noise on your bike and you're like, what is that? Yep. And it's like, because you are so, you have to be, you have to be yep. like in tune with it. And we have never done a techie episode because we're not really tech heads. No, like, definitely not on this side. No, I mean, I know what my stuff is just because I had to build it. But if you had me work on somebody else's bike, I would have no idea. Right. Because I know exactly how I've worked with my things. Um, like somebody had a Shimano drivetrain. I was like, get out of here. Dude. It was me. Have, and yeah. you're like, I don't know how to I do this. How to I was do like, that. okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, it has cables and things. <laughs> there's the, these buttons. Yeah. It's, it's interesting to me because speaking of like the older the rider is and look i'm not saying that the younger riders don't have that same ability 
But somebody like if we took somebody that's been riding for a, a, an anthem number of years, like if you take a Nixon or you yeah. take a, a Jakey Poo, for example, or Gerard, a, a Gerard who's on there last time. Mm -hmm. These guys are so, so in tune that Jake can look at something before he rides and be like, huh, I wonder why that's three millimeters. Like, yeah. I don't know how he sees that. Maybe he's used to looking down at three millimeters, but still, <laughs> hey, little, little joke there for the friends. <laughs> but like he knows this stuff and we made fun of him for a long time it was called the it was called the poo stare and he would just stand on his bike we have videos push it of away. it yeah. multiple push it away from himself and just look at the damn bike for well nixon had nixon has his uh uh little hack nixon i hope i'm gonna steal it for everybody but he puts his tire pressures on his bike remember? for different trails for different trails yeah yeah yep. or i'm not that good nixon maybe you should have had him check before you wreck pal oh hey, it's Aww. not is it too soon nixon? is it too soon i'm sorry i'm sorry we might have to bring him on just to uh because he's got nothing else to do because <laughs> he can't ride he can just drink his uh seltzers no he doesn't drink ciders he can drink his ciders and and do that yeah mm. I, I just think it's a it's something that sometimes is avoided the other side of it too is as uh candidly um i don't give two craps about machismo i just don't care like it's just not something that affects me i've learned that because i am not mechanically inclined i just my brain does not dale will tell you i'll call him and ask and dale's a very good friend this way i'll call and ask the dumbest question probably to anybody in bikes and he's like no i don't think he's always very polite if i call jake about it if i call jakey P, I get this <laughs> you're an idiot <laughs> So I know when when it's real serious, I'll call Jake because I'm going to take the blunt of his abu abuse, but or the brunt rather, and his blunt, but mostly the brunt. And then if, if I know it's something I'm like just questioning about, I, at least I can ask uh, a Dale about. It. But I do think talking about community because it's always going to come back some way. I do think it's important for us to have that space. I will tell you that you can call Jody with those kind of questions mm -hmm. at Build Tune Ryan, especially if it's shock. I mean, all of it related. But Jody, from a shock standpoint, is like a whiz. He's like a, a human shock whiz. I would not hesitate to reach out because what I've seen is your LBS might help. But if you know a specialist, it's kind of like going to here we are at the kidney thing again. I can go to an emergency doctor who's like, oh, it's only five millimeters because he is a general practitioner mm -hmm. of medicine. Not to say that ER docs don't deal with a lot of crazy stuff. Right. But if you go to a urologist, a guy who stares at PPs and woohoos all day long, he's going to be like, nah, bro, this is eight millimeters. It's sideways. Here's the five treatment methods. Yeah. Go to the specialist. So if I have a problem that's specialized enough, I'm going to Jody. Right. right? Or right. whoever my expert is. And that's a no offense to the local bike shops, but where yeah. we live, there's not a strong community of mountain bikers. I mean, we well, are more aggressive riders. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. We are a strong community, but. Um, a lot of us work on our own stuff. So they're not seeing a, like an amplitude of continuous problems where like Jody's seeing some kids rip some bikes up up there. So he's getting to see all these different things that we might actually have the same that he can fix pretty quickly. And so what I found with that is like, I have different, L like the only downside to one of the, the bike shop that has the most experience in our area is, is 45 minutes away. It's across a giant bridge. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a hassle to get there. I plan my day because you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. If there's a wreck, you're screwed. So if I can't make it over there or I don't have a shoot or another reason to be on that side of the bay, I have a local shop that I love and, and it's a Trek store and those guys are great. Shout out to all of them over there. They've, they've helped me with a lot of different smaller problems, but if it's something I know I can deal with, I can go to them, get the part I need yeah. and they've helped me out. And those guys, I love them to death at, at infinity and mobile. They've been, cause they're close. So for small stuff, I can go deal with things or picking up parts, a little part I might need. Mm -hmm. And they've gone through and give me all kinds of different spacers that I needed when I was trying to get some brakes to fit. So I think it's good to consider that all, yes, it would be amazing if you have a one-stop LBS, but the reality <laughs> of it is uh, there's not a one-stop doctor either. And I yeah. look at it from what, who, who can do what the best right. Jody might be two and a half hours away from me, but it's worth it. If I'm going to go up there and, and know that I'm going to have somebody quality, or I can go to the Todd and I'll shout him out because he gets Todd is a, the Todd yeah. is the best mechanic in the area. Yeah. And he's the most thorough cleanest. He's the cleanest. He really down. dude. I when, think he probably spends more time cleaning his hands than it, he does working on your bike. No, I mean, when he built my bike, he yeah. built my bike for me with all the parts. And I just was like in awe watching him because he's so meticulous. And yeah. that's what I would. That's what I want. Yeah, well, he's fantastic. though. I mean, the guy rebuilds cards like it's yeah. it's in his nature. He's very mechanical. It's really me. crazy to see a gorilla working on bikes that well. <laughs> it's like I kind of I kind of want to get him like a little a little watch kit where he has to build <laughs> his own watch because I just have this picture of this hulking man with these tiny <laughs> dainty little <laughs> and he's just 
they're screwing into the smallest screws <laughs> ever. Listening to some them. Hank Williams or some other yeah. sad country music that he loves so much. It is funny though, like our our group of friends, like we love our bikes so much, and they're like an extension of us to a certain point, you know, like my meta was my personality yep. as a bicycle yep. right like and i think that's the way it kind of goes down and then when we get in a group of each other it's like everybody's bikes are so well tuned because we've we spend so much time on them yeah right yep and then you hear like it's when i was saying that you hear a noise on your bike and you're like what's that we hear each other's bike yeah. we're like we're like the women that have their periods all like connected right. like, like dude what's that noise yeah that's yeah. not normal we're getting in sync yeah and yeah. then Pat just changes his bike every other day, and we don't know what he's actually going to ride tomorrow. No, so. no one knows. He's a he's the mystery bike rider. He just shows up with <laughs> different something on his bike. Justin does too. In fairness, yeah, Justin's a hot swapper. He hot swaps stuff, and so was God. I mean, he's still with us, but God rest him as a rider. But Todd Hall was a hot. Oh. That dude would show up with twenty six changes. I used to work for him, and he would be like, "Listen," and he would problem solve, and he had the best problem solving method. It was always like you attack one little problem at a time till you figure it out. That did not apply to him in bicycles. That dude would just change 20 things and then couldn't figure out which one was right. wrong. He would just swap them back and forth. Every combination. Like, you oh know, there's like Lord. infinity amounts of combinations. He would find well, them. that fork and these pedals and that brake lever, he, well, we got to switch it. God love him. He was the best at, at, at going through all that. Speaking of, if anybody's looking for a bike, that dude has a Orbea. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the I don't know what the model is. is. It's the e-bike Orbea. Uh, it's Gerald Rogan and it uh so it's top speed whatever you want and then it um and it's loaded if it like wasn't I, small i'd buy i would already bought it it's incredibly cheap he's selling the whole bike for like 4500 bucks or something yeah like eleven thousand dollars worth of parts on it it is ridiculous it's top as top of the line as you can make a bike and so it is for sale if anybody's interested you can always reach out to us or find them on facebook or whatever else if you're looking for one it's a hell of an e-bike and it, let me tell you todd takes care of his stuff right mm -hmm. and this is not the bike he had his accident on and it's not the same todd two different it's not Todds. the todd it's todd yeah just todd shares my same last name no relation um yeah a few other shout outs too while we're doing shout outs sure. i guess um shout out shane richardson congratulations uh starting with summer yep. bike academy that's pretty sweet that's I'm, pretty rad i know super uh, stoked for him he, good guy good good Summit's, good good rider yeah very good rider Summit's going to be down here in mobile uh, yep. february 24th um so if anybody is looking to take a class in mobile if you have a chance, uh, I highly suggest it. Uh, don't be intimidated. They have done, those guys do the best job at making it approachable. Uh, we've, we've had Justine on the show and she's talked about it before, but like they make it approachable mm -hmm. and friendly and easy to get into. Um, you will not be outgunned. You'll literally no. just celebrate the triumphs of others. It's fantastically a good time. Yeah. And it doesn't matter your skill level. Like I took it and what was under, like, I wasn't good enough. Right. You know? So like I go in there with my ego and I still learn things. <laughs> I think it's a, it's a solid program that they have down on that side of it. Um, that is there anything else that we want to touch on before? Yeah. We... Don't forget about Hagen in there. He's still hanging out there. Yeah. he's um, hanging, It's hanging winter time. So he's kind of been quiet lately. Yeah. Um, he, we still talk. I'll see yeah. him this weekend, but yeah. Um, he said, uh, hi to everyone. Oh, good. There we go. There you go um so uh those that have ordered the jerseys first off uh from me and dale both thank you guys and gals and folks very 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 Absolutely. much the order is in they shall be here at some point we cannot wait to see a bunch of uh blood and dirt stained jerseys white they're jerseys. white it's gonna be awesome <laughs> ripping up the world um one day i think i'm gonna make a fake we don't have crash replacement jerseys no, by the way <laughs> fair enough great point <laughs> one day i think i want to make a uh i'm gonna make a troll jersey where it's not like it's going to look like a world's jersey with like but it won't be an american flag it's just gonna be a black reb sleeve oh nice so yeah. i can be so we can have our own little trash talk yeah that's pretty cool nothing makes jakey poo matter than me wearing world uh, uh downhill oh, color yeah. socks Those i love socks. doing it now i just can't help but troll the uci him. socks oh i just wear the uci socks it. just <laughs> to troll him it's my favorite thing he's so troll easy <laughs> troll easy um okay well, that's this episode. Dale and I are going to attempt to fix our bikes, hopefully soon. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to, I have surgery again, so wish me good luck. That it drops today while you're listening to this episode. I am mm. literally having someone touch my wiener <laughs> that's not, while, I'm, <laughs> while I'm knocked out. And it's, it's not probably me. a woman. It and that's me. fine, too. I hope nothing goes sideways. It's embarrassing. And let me tell you, if you have kidney stones, I feel your pain, quite literally. Um, but... Uh, that's all happening that's what's going on shout out to everybody who's been su supportive and helpful and, and thanks for all the support if you need anything uh 
uh, tune rise or bike rise, we do suggest you head over to uh, buildtunerun.com. Check them out. Obviously, we shouted out our tattoos and everybody else. We, we got all our team in play. This time, we didn't forget anyone. Hooray. We've done it. Just remember what Dale Boyd says. If you break your shit, there's a way to fix it. Even if you have a kidney, it's done. <laughs> Dot com. I don't know. Man on a mission, I'm a kidney. You know I be on a one. Yeah.